Om Namah Shivaya, as in fire, here on the way of Dharma. Uh, I'd like to give thanks before I continue. Give thanks to, for life. Give thanks to the Devas and the Devatas and spread peace to each and every one of you. Without more being said and further divulging into the topic of how I am, I'll just say, Om Lim Bagala Muki Sarvadushtanam Vacham Mukam Padam Stambhaya Jivham Kilaya Budhim Vinashaya Hrim Om Swaha This is how I feel and this is how I am right now. Om Sahana Bhavatu Sahana Bhunaktu Sahaviryam Karavavai Tejasvinavadhi Tamastu Mavidvishavahai Om Shanti 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 Let me check something quickly so that I can prepare the notes for you. Now, if you are new over here, please welcome to the way of Dharma. And I am Asinest Fire. So our topic for today are different entities and different demons or rather shadow shadows of ourselves that we encounter in the astral realm and creation in its vast uh, vastness basically so before we continue please make sure that you do subscribe and make sure that you do like and make sure that you check out my previous videos because i do assure you that you will derive much benefit from this channel way of dharma as it is fire so now i was browsing on facebook uh we're getting right into it i was browsing on facebook and i came across a video this was uh weeks back and then this video was uploaded by someone that i think is a negative person that I ended up unfollowing for that fact because of that fact so I check it out and I see a person having interrelations or copulation with a dog so there's a subject that they call it under uh, it's even in the Bible they talk about bestiality I don't know if it's correct for me to say it, uh, but so far YouTube hasn't done anything to jeopardize my channel. Om Shanti. So the subject of bestiality. I remember when I was in grade nine with my friend, I was one of those cool guys and one of those bully guys in grade nine. That was it. So I like to tease. So I told my friend at the time that imagine having a dog uh imagine having let me let me check something first imagine having uh, an interrelation copulation with an animal and then later coming to find out it gives birth to some offspring that have a similar resemblance or a semblance to you what would make matters even worse would be the fact that those offspring would learn how to speak fluently and then call you uh, father or mother. Okay, it was a very, very traumatic idea, but it, 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 it sparked a curiosity. And yes, okay. Years passed by and now we are here and I'm encountering that video. I see the video, it depresses me at the time because uh, I do know the power of the sexual edge and I do know the lengths that humanity can go to satisfy the edge. It's a very, very powerful thing. And uh, I, I'm here to tell you sex is not for everyone and definitely it's not for little children. If you are not of sound mind, I don't think you should be having any sex. Perfecto. So now I go to my friend uh, Ras Tabo. I'll I'll have him I'll have him on my channel. 
I think we'll do a video later and then I'll upload the video. We'll be talking about such subjects. And then I asked him, my friend, uh, do you know anything about bestiality? Uh, is it something that's common in the paradigm of black people? And then he says, ah, it's all over. Even in the rural areas in Eastern Cape, you'd hear of Kosa, uh, rural Kosa people having such relations with goats. And even here in, in, in the townships, you'd hear of people ambushing goats in, in those spaces, in those, uh, what do you call a skanga? <laughs> It's not a forest, but it's where it's a, it's a, it's a naha, you know, where where you you throw away stuff uh, like and a, a land basically, which is not being owned, uh, which is not being developed. Uh, just a land, you know, a, a rough area. I don't know what they. No, it's not a forest. I'm sorry for my lack of voc vocabulary, but you do get the picture. So yes. And then they ambush these animals and then some they even ambush to to a point whereby they even die so my issue with this and this goes on with it, it applies also with sex toys basically you know sometimes when you have a girl and then she's able to stop you or to refuse to have sex with you sometimes it helps you because you get to control your sexual edge because if it were not for that, if it were for, if, if girls or women had loved sex the way that men do, I think as a guy, you would die from exhaustion uh, and you would die from having sex basically because there is no limit uh, to, to having as much sex. The more you have it, the more you want it. So with animals, they can't say no. You are merely abusing an animal and you are raping an animal. So they can't say no. So there's no limit as to what quantities of sex you can have with the animal. It's a very, 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 very destructive thing. And then take it back also into the toy. The toy, you do it and then it cannot say no. Blow up dolls also cannot say no. So there's no limit. So when you do that, you don't put a restriction to your sexual desire. It intensifies and you might even find yourself advancing into more sexual behavior of raping uh, little babies that can't refuse and so on and so forth, which is a danger and a psycho psychosis, basically. So that's my issue. There's also another spiritual issue. As you know, we are a channel of spirituality. So I will also address the issue of the spiritual side effects of it. Whatever that you do with an animal that involves giving birth definitely gives life or whatever that you do on earth that gives life uh, might not give life in the physical but will definitely give life in other levels of vibration or other dimensions of existence so you might have interrelations with an animal and then apparently physically you wouldn't have uh, such a, a being as half man half goat but definitely on the astral plane and other dimensions of existence, you will definitely have such beings. And it's, 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 it's not a nice sight to encounter any of those beings. What sparked that premonition or what gave me that epiphany of those different types of life forms is when I spoke to my friend Ras Tabo when he told me of the different beings he has encountered since he has uh, a, a more sub finer eye, a third eye, to see the finer or subtle side of spirituality or of life. So he, 
he has encountered most of these things that we will be talking about about so it's a, it's a I'm, I'm i'm happy i can't see such things and i'm happy uh my third eye is not prematurely open because even with the stuff that i have on my physical level and the books that i read the information is too overwhelming and it makes me panic and the number five's biggest fear uh, is losing their sanity so yes different life forms so if you have relations with a dog you will have a half dog half man on the astral plane with a goat half goat half man on the astral plane and the thing that i'm suspecting also is that these beings when they live in the sub in the astral realm they obtain some level of spiritual power and they can perform magical things you see i and i they can perform magical things and they can either torment they can do all these kinds of things because now they are a being and they are a spirit uh, an astral entity that can wreak havoc on the physical plane because the subtler side of the physical realm would be the astral realm and there's no limitations as to what you can do uh, on the astral plane so with that being said be careful uh, if you do when we do must debate because i definitely know of the subject of masturbation uh, there's beings that you create as men as you ejaculate your seed definitely mm. and life definitely does form but don't give no mind to it don't be afraid of that aspect of life the one that brings more concern is the one of bestiality you will have such beings and these beings can be very very magically uh, advanced to a point whereby they will torment you and you will always have a a bondage or a a bond with them because they are your offspring so what bores me is the subject uh, is the fact that the being cannot say no to your advances of trying to have sex with it and when you don't have a con a controlled sexual desire i am sorry you are headed for trouble so now let's go into the origination of life forms you have to understand that there's different beings that exist out there half man half dog some of you might encounter an anubis uh, some of you might encounter a dragon uh, some of you might encounter extraterrestrials uh, some of you might encounter other 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 strange beings like the insecticide uh, insecti insectilian yes those aliens that are insects i used to ask myself how come these people were able to come up with such sites of Hanumanji, such sites of Shri Mahapratyangira? These beings are there and they exist on a subtler dimension. Dragons, they are there and they can manifest on a physical, uh, physical existence. They are there spiritually. They are there in the subtler dimensions of life. They are there, trust me. So when they come up to you in the astral, you will perceive of death. Because I used to think this. I used to think that you would imagine something like that and then it would, it would be easy for you to draw it. No, 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 no. You can't imagine something you don't know or something you can't perceive basically so what happens is that these beings are there and whenever you have in imagination or a vision of it they have come and revealed themselves to you so that's how you are able to draw dragons that's how you are able to 
release your imagination to come up with cartoons like the sesame street to come takalani sesame also known as takalani sesame in south africa uh, and many other cartoons that you see in children's uh, cartoon series and tv uh, those those things actually do exist even prior to them being thought forms because this would be the common as assumption in 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 western eso esotericism it would be the common assumption that uh, they exist as thought forms that's not the case they are there the reason that you are able to perceive them it's because they are there and they reveal themselves to you how did i come to this conclusion okay i know that i have seen uh cartoons like sesame street and takalani sesame and barney and teletubbies and so on and so forth before in my life when i was young uh, and those things they are not a very beautiful sight they are not a beautiful sight if you ask me the cartoons from takalani sesame they are not beautiful looking creatures okay they are not beautiful looking creatures now i almost said something which can also be a possibility those cartoons when i was young they used to traumatize me okay because of how they look they look hideous but then it wouldn't be proof that that's why those beings come and represent what they represent to me because another person has also perceived of these animals being uh that to them okay what i mean is this simply the cartoons from sesame street are the same demons that bind you to uh existence what are those demons your attachment your depression your trauma your stress your pain whatever psychological defect that you have it appears to you in the form of those creatures those beings when i was doing chord sadhana when i was imagining my pain my trauma my attachment those beings came to my mind's eye and always i see beings that are like the cartoons from sesame street or those are uh, monster cartoons that you would see in that cartoon monster uh you you see that those cartoons monster yes that animation yes that, and i've never watched it i've only seen the the pictures but what i perceive in the mind's eye when i'm doing chord sadhana is those beings they always come in that form basically and if you ask me those things are hideous okay they are hideous they don't look nice at all uh they are demons uh they can also uh flip now this guy is giving me ideas but he's never even executed any of those you see what pisses me off uh okay le let's continue uh <clears throat> the demons that you would see in buddhism uh the drawings that you would see in buddhism and the cartoons they are the same thing you understand especially those in china those hideous looking lions and those lion dances things those are demons uh which represent your shadow self and those things when you see them they are hungry and they want to reintegrate with you you understand but because you keep on repressing them they wreak havoc man those things are hideous i don't know if i don't even know what to call them you understand because you can't say it's a dragon because it's something that has horns and then it has fair like those sesame street uh cartoons man that thing is hideous man uh, it's a type of thing that traumatizes you basically so this is how i came to conclusion to the conclusion that these cartoons are actually those things but now i ask myself why do these cartoon creators 
would make such beings to come and act for little children, man? Why would you do that to the children's psyche, man? Why would you do that? It takes a level of sickness and madness to, to actually perpetuate such a thing. Man, I don't like that. And I, uh, it has to stop. But yeah, uh, who am I? Mahayu. So those demons are the same demons that would come to you when you are doing shadow work. Now, shadow work is a very, very important sadhana. And it has wonderful uh, benefits. I actually was able to get out of this uh, previous love affair that I had. Partly because I did shadow work. The ego has this tendency of attaching to external things. And it has this tendency of creating a psychosis. Because that's what attachment definitely does. It creates a psychosis. Then you start to expect people to behave a certain way. You start to expect them to do certain things. You start to expect them to behave the way you want them to behave. And man, if it wasn't for Chord, man, I am telling you, uh, I'd still be in pain right now. You understand? So Chord is a very, very powerful sadhana. These demons, when you repress them, they get, they get out of their way and they seek attention like a child who hasn't had attention from its parents at a young age. They start to go out and smoke and drink alcohol and do all these funny things just to get attention from their parents. And only when that parent, that parent or those parents sit down with the child and actually offer affection and love to it and conversate and give them attention that you actually get to see that, oh, this person had no problems. They only wanted attention, love and care. What happens with these demons is that. As you live and you experience pain and you attach to certain things, your ego attaches to the external things. And when you attach to external things, you start to identify them with yourself, basically. Forgetting that it's the false self. So when you associate them with yourself, you basically you don't want to lose yourself. So when you lose those things because the nature of life is being temporary or having things that are temporal, temporary, not temporal, man, temporal, this is a temporal law, man, temporary. So when the change comes and occurs, you actually lose parts of yourself. And there's a term for it, which they call it soul fragmentation. So many of your souls, or many of your soul, your true self, gets fragmented into many portions and they get scattered around. And now, the very same work that we are doing, that we came here on earth to do, is to reconcile with our true self, the true soul, the true source of everything. Because right now, we are separated from our true selves. So we would go out to have relationships and have sex to actually get a glimpse of how it would be to reunite with your true self. Because reuniting with your true self would mean that all souls must come together and actually be one thing. And then you would know your true self, which is the true God. And I am you and you are me, basically. So, yes. If I am you, I am myself. It's definitely like that. So... I am you, you are me. So when we come together and reunite, we actually get to be our true self, which is God. And that separation is the basis of all suffering of humanity. So now because we get to get a glimpse of that uh, reunion of true self, when we have relationships with uh, our marital relationships, when we have relationships with uh, the family, when you have relationships with friends, we get to get a glimpse of it. And then the false self, because it's imperfect, because it seem, uh, it, it is, the false self is definitely separated from the true self. So 
it, it, it feels pain and it fragments from your true self and then it causes such problems. Hence, you see the ego uh, plaguing the false self, plaguing uh, everyone in their entire life because now it's looking for attention. It's looking to go back to its true origination. So now it's causing problems even to, it, to, to its higher master, its true self or its potential of reaching its true self, which is you in actuality. So because of that fact, it also happens the same way on the astral realm uh, when you get to repress these parts of yourself that were lost when, it was, when you fragmented your soul. Basically what I'm saying, your shadow acts the same way that you would uh, in an ego form to get attention from the higher self. You irritate. You irritate a lot to try, to try and get the attention from your higher self. So those demons that you see too, irritate a lot because they want attention of the higher self, the true self, which is you, your mind, your conception, your, 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 your yourself, basically. So that's what happens in the term for soul fragmentation your soul gets fragmented and now you suffer a separation a longing a lacking a inner hunger insatiable hunger last and insatiable uh, thing a longing basically that can be satisfied it can only be satisfied when you reintegrate with your shadow by way of chod sadhana or any shadow work meditation that you can come across that would be helpful because there are some that are not helpful. So sometimes in some forms, when you reintegrate that part of your shadow, another, sometimes it may turn into another demon because it has to, it, it, it has been there for a while and it's been accumulating power and it's been growing based off of the trauma and the fear and the pain that you've been experiencing. So now when you reintegrate with it, it turns into another thing. And now it, it comes as another issue in your life. Uh, and unfortunately, uh, we don't have much time here on earth to keep on doing chod sadhana because it would be a lifelong sadhana to try and reintegrate with all your shadows because, uh, the fact that you are living in any system of living in any civilization, whether you are a Tibetan monk, the fact that you are living in this physical vessel, it creates a soul fragmentation, a shadow. Let's say, suppose uh, you decide to be a monk, decide to abstain from sex. You repress that sexual desire and then it turns into something else into spiritual hypocrisy. I don't have sex. I'm better than everyone else. You reintegrate with that shadow. It turns into another false sense of piety. You know, so you would be doing sadhana all your life, trying to clean all your shadows. While you can be doing what? Mantras. Uh, eh, man, you see Mahakali, man. If you approach Mahakali, uh, man, Anyway, let, let, that's what I meant when I said the shadows turn into something else. So this is what I wanted to discuss with you guys. Uh, bestiality, it creates different life forms on the astral plane, even though it's not visible, visible in the physical eye, but in the astral plane, definitely you will have such beings. Uh, also, uh, such beings that you'd perceive in movies in uh, the astral plane and bizarre looking creatures, they are already there. Some of it is our shadow. Some of it, they exist in far, far dimensions than we can ever imagine. And they are establishing communication like the example of the dragon. It's there, it's wise, it's magically powerful. Uh, I remember talking to you about it telling you that in Limpompo, there's a protective dragon in some mountain, which will, which will go deeper into it 
when my friend comes over for the interview. So with all that being said, I'd like to thank you for supporting this channel and getting it to 655 subscribers. Uh, jai to my Hindu Indian friends. Uh, I love you guys. You have shown so much support uh, to this channel by listening to the mantras, listening to a guy, a black man from South Africa chanting mantras. It means a lot. You support me. Uh, there's just some level of kindness that I receive from the Indians. And uh, I'd like to shout out to my sisters, uh, both of them, for getting me through the emotional turmoil that I had put myself in. So thank you. Shout out to you guys. Uh, and I feel Om Helim Bagala Muki Sarva Dushtan. No time for jokes, guys. So yes, my Indian friends, Jai, Victory, uh, power to you guys and thank you and shout out to lemon lime lucky uh, i don't know you personally bra but i do like that you interact in the comment section you do communicate uh, shout out to the friends that i had in the group chat shout out to you people uh thank you for being there uh thank you Om Namah Shivaya Asinest Fire. Let me start first by 